in the course of the next few days, I want to introduce the hymns by saying a bit about the difference between what I call top-down thinking in the Christian life and bottom-up thinking, and top-down worship and bottom-up worship. And top-down worship, um, of course, is about starting with where worship goes on unceasingly uh, and eternally in heaven where God dwells and where angels upon angels, thousands upon thousands, myriads, countless angels, worship him day and night, beholding him, beholding his glory, his excellencies, his perfections, and are filled with awe and wonder, worship and love continually. And that is where worship is going on and where our thoughts of worship should start. And in this hymn by Isaac Watts, that's what he tries to capture. He draws the contrast between the worship of angels that behold God and sort of I just ask really, how can we worship? Who am I to worship such, uh, such a God with an acceptable worship to him? They behold him as he is and offer a pure worship. I only behold traces um, of his glory and offer a worship that is far inferior to theirs. And yet he uh, captures in the third verse uh, this wonderful truth that by the grace of God, as faith enters our hearts, God shines his light of revelation into our hearts. We catch glimpses, as it were, of his glory and are prompted and inspired to praise him. And especially when his love comes into our hearts, as Paul says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. We experience something of heaven in our own souls. And then the last verse is a wonderful verse where he, uh, again, in this top-down sense of worship, is focused completely on the attributes and infinite perfections of God. I've altered a few of the words to update them, but uh, this is how the last verse goes. Your being, Lord, is infinite, immeasurably vast. You only know yourself aright. You are the first and last. You are a sea without a shore, a sun without a sphere. Your time is now and evermore. Your place is everywhere. Now recall the Reverend William Still one time preaching about God and uh, trying to put into words and preaching some of God's greatness and uh, saying that it really uh, hurts our brains to try and grasp some of these things about him. But we need to do it. We've got to do it because that is what worship is about. It is stretching the boundaries of human thought to its limit and yet even then knowing that we're only beginning to trace the immeasurable greatness of the God that we worship and that angels worship ceaselessly. How shall I sing that majesty which angels do admire? In dust and ashes here I lie and hear the heavenly choir. Thousands of thousands stand around your throne, O God most high. Ten thousand times ten thousand sound your praise, but who am I? Your brightness song to them appears, here are your footsteps trace. A sound of God comes to my ears, but they behold your face. The best I bring is dark and cold with all my fire and light. Yet, Lord, when you accept their gold, please treasure up my might. Shed faith's clear light into my heart, inflame it with love's fire. Then I shall sing and take my part with that celestial choir. They sing because you are their son, may beams upon me shine. For heaven in my heart's begun, when your own love is mine. Your being, Lord, is infinite, 
immeasurably vast. You only know yourself aright. You are the first and last. You are a sea without a shore, a sun without a sphere. Your time is now and evermore. Your place is everywhere.